Hey bestie, welcome back. Are you overwhelmed starting a business or overwhelmed trying to grow a business? In today's video, I'm going to show you five strategies to help you overcome entrepreneur overwhelm. I'm Amy Walker, your biz bestie, and I help clients create predictable sales through organic marketing and scalable sales strategies. I'll take care of everything. really overwhelming building a business and growing a business. I mean, when you're just starting out, you're basically creating something from nothing. And there are so many different things that need to be done. And it feels like they all really need to be done right now. And it's like living in a construction zone when you're starting a, a business. Then when you get to growth and scale, now all of a sudden it's like everything that you did to get to this point in your business is the same things that are stopping you from getting to the next point in your business. So there's a lot of restructuring. There's a lot of you've outgrown some of your systems. You have to stop doing things and trust that other people are going to be able to do them really well. And you can feel very buried by the amount of pressure that comes onto you. So no matter where your business is at, um, whether it's brand new and you're just starting up or you've been around for a long time, you're trying to scale, overwhelm is kind of a, a normal part. It's a normal experience that a lot of entrepreneurs have, but we don't work well when we are overwhelmed. We're unproductive. We're not creative thinkers. We show up at like a fraction of our total capacity because a big portion of our capacity is just going towards managing that feeling of being overwhelmed. So it's, it is really important that we learn how to move past this so that we can show up for our business more productive, more um, creative, more everything really. But it is really important that we learn how to manage and overcome entrepreneur overwhelm. So today I'm gonna to share with you my five best tips for managing, if not avoiding altogether, that feeling of entrepreneur overwhelm. In full disclosure, I am momentarily feeling a little bit overwhelmed. So we had this day planned and we've been pushing it back a couple weeks. We needed to get YouTube content film. So we did all the prep work. My husband and I were ready to go and do the filming. And then we got a call from the school that our 14 uh, year old may or may not have broken or sprained his ankle. So now they're on their way to the hospital and I am rearranging all of the other things that we had planned today in order to make things still kind of come together, but it's not going to come together in the same way. And this, I want to point out because I think this is a big part of why we feel overwhelmed in business. We plan things really tightly. And then when plan A doesn't work out, it feels like it's impossible to get it all together. Well, you know what? Thanks to you, I'm halfway there. And the reality is, besties, if you are running a family and you are running a business, there are a lot of instances where family stuff comes in and disrupts business stuff or business stuff comes in and makes family a little bit more chaotic. So it's like you have overwhelm over here, you have overwhelm over there, and then you mix them together and surprise, it's all really overwhelming, right? This happens. So uh, maybe I'll throw in a bonus tip today about like what I do when actually really unexpected and unfortunate things pop up and how do I create that balance between the two? Okay, there you go. Okay, let's jump into our five steps um, number one is to beware what I call the vortex of doom. It's a very scientific term, but here's what it is. It's this feeling of, I need to do this, but I can't do this until I've done this. And I can't do this until I've done this, but in order to do this, I need to do this, but this can't happen until this happens. And then all of a sudden it's this circular thing where it feels like everything just goes down the drain really, really fast. And you find yourself feeling overwhelmed, like this is not even possible, nothing can ever get done. This especially comes into play when you are a new business because you're building something from nothing, right? Like you are taking all of these ideas and you need to get a website set up, but before you have your website set up, you need to have your branding done, but before your branding gets done, you need to have your messaging done, but before your messaging done, you need to get, and then all of a sudden you're back to the website and you're like, oh, it'll never work, it's too overwhelming. It's not true, it just isn't true. The reality is that everything that you get done is like laying a brick in your foundation. And every single piece of the puzzle is going to help things be more successful and your success isn't ever dependent on any one thing. You could not have a website for two years and still be really successful in business, right? 
I've seen lots of businesses do it. In fact, I don't think a website is actually that critical when you're just new and getting started. I think there's other things you should do first. So when we let go of that idea of codependency, like this has to happen before this and this order that doesn't seem to make sense, and we just say, what can I do today? It's gonna feel a lot less overwhelming. The other part of this that I recommend is making sure that you learn how to be at peace with things not being done, which is gonna lead me into number two, which is the art, perfect the art of leaving things undone. So you will, as long as you're an entrepreneur and as long as you're a mom, you will forever have things that are undone. My dishes are literally never done. As soon as they're done, someone puts a cup in the sink. <laughs> it's like, no! As soon as the laundry is all clean and folded and put it away, there's more in the basket right? It's this concept of things are never truly done. And so by getting really clear on the fact that your goal is not to have everything be done, it's not the goal. We're not shooting for that. What we are shooting for is progress in the important areas. And when we are mentally focused on the things that are undone, and then we have this portion of our brain that's trying to focus on the things we're actually doing, it's taking away our capacity from the tasks that are at hand. So I have a couple of rules for myself. Number one is if I'm not going to do it, I'm also not going to think about it. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna feel guilt about it. So when we had the conversation this morning about, okay, who's gonna take the kiddo to the hospital? I have a, an interview that's scheduled that we've already had to reschedule before. Only one of us needs to go and somebody needs to be here when the little kids get home from school. So it wasn't really an option for both of us to go and it made more sense for me to stay. So as soon as I make that decision, then I have to let go of any feelings of mom guilt. Like, trust me, my husband is more than capable to take a kid to the hospital for a broken bone. He can handle it, right? So now I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to think about that. I don't have to feel guilty about that. They will call me as soon as they know something. And I still got to do my mom stuff of like, you know, getting him his ice and getting him some crutches and helping him with his sock and, you know, feeling around and seeing what was swollen. Like I still got to show him that I care and I'm invested in his well being. And then I get to be present with where I need to be. So that's something that I'm not doing. Maybe it's a, it's a pile of laundry for you that you're just like, that laundry is not gonna get folded today. Maybe it is a task or a project or something that you're looking at it going, okay, we're, we're not gonna get all of this done today. I am gonna tell you, I had a goal for how many videos I wanted to film today. I'm not gonna get them all done. And that's okay, because once I've decided what I'm not doing, I can let go of all of the yuck associated with the undone stuff and just plug in to what I am going to do. I am going to get some videos done today. I am going to finish record the interview for the podcast that I have rescheduled and now I'm gonna do it. So there will be things that will get done and I can find peace and focus in those areas and I can let the rest of the stuff go. Being able to be really, really clear and specific on what you're not going to do is one of the most empowering things and it will totally help you minimize the entrepreneur overwhelm. Okay, number three is to set your 20 mile march. The 20 mile march is a concept that Jim Collins talks about in his book, Great by Choice. And I really love Jim Collins. All of his business books are phenomenal. And in this, what it's talking about is that if we were gonna go on like a cross country trek and we were gonna look at it and say, okay, when the weather's good, we're gonna go 50 miles. And when the weather's bad, we're gonna go five miles. We're gonna actually struggle more to be able to get where we wanna go. Instead of just saying, you know, we're hiking across the country and we're just gonna go 20 miles every day. So it's not pushing yourself beyond what's capable in even challenging circumstances. And it's um, going to allow you to be able to create a sustainable pace. Uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, you may have heard me talk about one of my mantras is that um, I'm in business for the marathon, not the sprint. That's exactly what this is about. A marathon runner, a distance runner has to pace themselves. Whereas a sprinter does this whole run really fast and then they're done. And they, they just, they like literally fall over at the end of the race and they can barely move. But a distance runner can go much farther because of the pace that they set. You need to know what your 20 mile march is in business. Because when you are sprinting and stopping and sprinting and stopping, it is very overwhelming to do your business. You constantly have this feeling of you're pushing harder than what's good for you and then everything falls apart. 
and then you have to rebuild it and you're pushing harder than what's good for you and everything falls apart versus just saying, this is the pace that I can go the distance at. And when I do this, my life and my business are in alignment and we make more progress. I have a guilty confession. I feel like this video is turning into an Amy confessional, but here we go. I've been pushing for like a month. I made a decision back in January and it was completely made out of scarcity. I had gotten COVID and um, I was feeling behind on things. And so all the stuff that I was feeling behind on, I started shoving it into the month of April. <laughs> so in the month of April, we had um, a business event every single week that I was in charge of and hosting and running. So every week for four weeks, I hosted a business conference and um, it was definitely above my 20 mile march. My I don't work at that pace. My team doesn't work at that pace. And the interesting thing is we didn't end up producing higher revenue than what we normally do. Now, it was a good month. OK, it was a good month. I'm grateful for it. But it was not an amazing stellar month. And that's what happens when we push beyond the 20 miles is we think we're gonna produce more. In my moment of like, I'm starting off the year behind and I know that I want to have an awesome year, I'll just like load up the spring before the kids get out of school. In that moment of thinking, in my mind, we were gonna produce twice as much. We produce normal and it happens when you are pushing and pushing and pushing, you don't actually accomplish more. There's a law of diminishing returns that once you push beyond the point that's good for you, you're going to get less and less and less from all of that effort that you put in. So set your 20 mile march. Just avoid that putting yourself into an overwhelming position altogether by picking a pace that you can go the distance at. <laughs> all right, my next tip for you is to focus on getting less things done in a day, but getting more of the important things done in a day by using a six most important things list. This is actually the Ivy Lee method. In the early 1900s, Charles Schwab was one of the most successful men in America. He was running the Bethlehem Steel Company and I mean, just one of those early industrial age tycoons. So Charles Schwab brought in a consultant named Ivy Lee and asked him to help make his entire team more productive. Ivy Lee said, give me 15 minutes with each of your officers. And Charles Schwab said, what's it going to cost me? He said, nothing. I'm going to give everyone this advice for free. I'm going to come back in three months and you can pay me what you feel like it was worth to you. So he gave them this tip. And the tip was before they went home at the end of the day to write down the six most important things that they needed to get done the next day. And then when they came in the morning to do those first, really simple, right? So when you get started in the morning, you only focus on the first task until that's done. Then you go to the second and the third until you finish the six that are the most important things for the day. And then you make your list again for the next day. So after three months, Charles Schwab was so delighted with the results that he wrote Ivy Lee a check for $25,000, which, you know, in today with inflation is probably somewhere close to 450, 500,000 US American dollars. So it was a big increase in productivity for their company. One of the things that I do not like to do is operate off of a really long task list, a really long to-do list. I like to have six things that I'm focusing on each day. Now for me, I am not a night owl. I'm a morning person. So I don't do my list before I go to bed because at the end of the day, even at just the end of my work day, I'm like so ready to be out of my office. There's no thoughts of what's most important. But when I wake up first thing in the morning, I have so much clarity. So I do it opposite. I do the beginning of the day is where I write my list and then I get to work on my tasks. What it helps you to do is prioritize the things that are truly the most important that are going to really move your business forward. And it bumps out all of those other like squeaky wheel items that nag you and cause you a lot of stress and overwhelm that aren't really essential or don't really need to be done. Or it doesn't matter if they get done today. So this is one of my best strategies for avoiding overwhelm is don't ask yourself to get so much done in a day. Instead, just focus on a few high value tasks. Tip number five for avoiding entrepreneur overwhelm is to have launch timelines that are realistic. One of the reasons I think we get very overwhelmed, especially getting a new business up and going or a new project up and going or new department is that we try to accomplish something in a faster timeline than is good for us. 
and we don't have it all like step-by-step -step planned out. When I create a launch timeline, and I know we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna do this, and then this, and then this, and then this, it helps me to be realistic about how much time I give us to do it, because I can actually see all of the steps. So instead of saying, I have a new idea, we're gonna get it out there, let's launch it in two weeks, I'm like, I have a new idea, let me map out every step that needs to happen in order for this to work. And then I look at it and I go, oh, that actually cannot be done in two weeks. Let's give it a month. <laughs> and then I can adhere to that timeline. This principle of really taking a pause to step back not only helps you put yourself in less overwhelming time crunches, but it also gives you a better chance at being successful with the thing that you're actually trying to put out there, which then helps you create results which results, it, like, let's be honest, results feel really good. And one of the things that's overwhelming is doing a lot of work and not getting results. So if we can set ourselves up for the win, so much the better. Okay, so I told you that I would share with you how I personally manage the overwhelm of family, unexpected family things interfering with business things. So the very first thing that I have learned to do here is I've learned to separate out what are emergencies versus non-emergencies. So if anyone in my family has an emergency, I will literally stop whatever I am doing and I will go wherever I need to be in order to take care of that emergency. It does not matter what is planned. If there is a true emergency, I am there 100%. But most of what comes up is not actually an emergency. So for example, today, um, whatever happened with my son's ankle, whether it's a sprain or a break, he fell and then he stayed at school for another 20 minutes to see if he could put any weight on it before he called us and said, uh, this is not, it's not getting better. It's numb. It's painful. I can't put any weight on it. And it was like, okay, well, let's come get you and bring you home. Then we sat at home and we talked to it. We looked at it. We made our best judgment call and said, yeah, I, it, there's a chance it's broken. So now we need to go to the hospital. That was not an emergency situation. If it was a car accident, um, if somebody was bleeding, if they're, you know, someone's in the hospital, all of those things, those are emergencies. This is a, an inconvenience that I am concerned about for him, right? Like I, I'm concerned about him, but it's not an emergency. What happens in our business is so often we treat these, these things that do need to be dealt with as though they're emergencies and we drop everything and go into it instead of reevaluating and saying, how does how do things need to shift today? So there was a part of my mom brain that was like, okay, I'll cancel everything for today. I'll take him to the hospital because I am a little bit of a smother mother and I like to be the one who does everything. But it just made more sense to not do that and to say, well, let's just reevaluate. Maybe I'll get less videos done today, but I'll still get some done. I'll get the interview done and he'll go with his dad and I'll be here when the kids get home, fine. So that is the biggest thing that you can do. The second thing that I do want to recommend for you is that there's this part of us that likes the interruptions. I, let Hear me out on this. There is this part of us that likes being needed by my big 14 year old son who never really seems to need things for me other than rides and cash, right? There's this part of us that likes to uh, be able to let go of the things that we didn't want to do in business and then jump into something that feels important. and. I need to recognize that that's an internal need of wanting to feel valued that I feel by solving other people's problems instead of filling by just focusing on my value and my worth and creating loving, healthy relationships and boundaries. Boundaries are a really good thing. Your business has to have them. Your family has to have them. And when you combine those together, you're gonna find that you can be present and be where you're needed with your family without your business having to fall apart every time something comes up. Because let's be honest, you guys, in the course of any given week, chances are someone's gonna get sick. Chances are somebody's gonna get hurt. Chances are someone's gonna have an emergency homework project that's been on the docket for weeks that they never mentioned and now all of a sudden it needs to be done. That's normal family life. But as you get really good at holding your ground, your family also gets really good at managing themselves a little bit better, being a little bit more responsible for their timelines and for their projects and not dumping things on you at the last minute. But you can still help. 
you can still be involved in the stuff that's going on in your family. It's not like we're saying we won't help with anything because we're working. We're just creating a little bit more of a calmer approach to it. We're not jumping frantically from one thing to the next. We're not putting out fires here and putting out fires here. We're just like, hey, here I am. I'm breathing, you're breathing. Let's figure out what's the best way to deal with the situation that is today. So there you have it. I hope that is helpful for you. Um, I know that it's overwhelming to start a business. It's overwhelming to balance being a parent and running a company, but I also know that it's so worthwhile. And the more that you master these skills, the less time you spend feeling overwhelmed. I still have moments, but it's not like the, the norm of what my life looks like. If this is helpful for you, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you can get notified every time we release new content. And now that we have talked about five ways to overcome entrepreneur burnout, the next video that I want you to watch is what is the foundation of a successful business? I can't wait to see you over there.